What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Right now I have a California Pizza Kitchen barbecue chicken pizza. Who would say that three times fast in the oven. It's gonna be ready in about like five minutes. But while I'm waiting for that, I wanted to talk to you guys about cheat meals. I did talk about cheat meals on my Instagram story a couple times last week, but the stories are like in 10 second clips and I felt like I was rushed and I didn't get all my thoughts out how I wanted to. So I wanna talk about it for about five minutes right now. I'll show you the pizza when it comes out, don't you worry, but in the meantime, I'll start talking about it. If you have no interest in hearing about cheat meals, uh, skip about five minutes ahead. I think that's how long it'll take, and you could watch my leg workout. If you don't want to watch my leg workout, well, then you're not going to like this video, so you should just click off of it now. So, cheat meals. I want to discuss it in three different parts. First, if you follow flexible dieting, if it fits your macros, like what I do, Technically, this pizza that I'm eating, it is not a cheat meal. I do not consider it a cheat meal because it fits perfectly into my macros for the day. However, it is pretty high in calories. So for me to fit it in my calories for the day, I didn't get to eat that much during the day. So right now I'm pretty hungry and I did pretty much have to suffer a little bit to get this to fit in my macros. And that's me who actually has pretty high macros. So if you're someone who's dieting or you just have lower macros than me, you might not even physically be able to fit this whole pizza into your macros for the day, even if you ate nothing else for the whole day. And even if you do have okay macros, it might not be worth it to you to fit in this whole pizza, so maybe you'll have to eat part of it or whatever. So I understand if you do, even if you follow flexible dieting, you still might not be able to fit in the whole pizza like this. But just so you know, for me, I do not consider this a cheat meal. All right, so that's the first aspect of it. The second aspect of cheat meals is the physical benefit slash effect. So physically, I do not believe a cheat meal will benefit you at all. Now, there are people who think that a cheat meal could benefit you in terms of it increases certain, the carbs increase certain hormones like leptin, which could increase fat burning. And those are fair points. Uh, studies have shown that uh, higher carbs can increase those hormones which help burning fat. However, I don't believe that the extra calories that you might consume from the cheat meal balances out the effect that you might actually get by increasing the fat burning hormones. So yes, you might get a slight benefit from those, incre those elevated hormones, but it's basically offset by the calories that you're consuming to get those elevated hormones, if that makes sense. Now, that's a cheat meal. You could have a controlled refeed, which I do believe in when dieting. And a controlled refeed is basically not a cheat meal, but it's where you elevate just your carbs. You pretty much lower your fat, lower your protein, and just elevate the carbs. So overall, your calories are actually about the same as they always are. But you get the benefit of those hormone increases with the extra carbs. So that's not a cheat meal. That's a refeed. So that's from a physical benefit. Will the cheat meal help you physically? I don't think so. Will it hurt you? Maybe not. I do not recommend cheat days. A cheat day, you could definitely add several pounds of fat in one day. And obviously not all cheat meals are created equal. If you eat a couple hundred calories over your maintenance for the day, probably won't do that much damage. You eat several thousand calories over your maintenance for the day, that could do some damage. So from a physical standpoint, I do not believe the cheat meal has a benefit. So moving on to the mental aspect. Let me see if it's ready yet. All right, we got two minutes till the pizza's ready. So from a mental aspect, I do see the benefit of a cheat meal. If you're, been, if you're on a diet for a long period of time, having that cheat meal once a week, keeping it within reason could definitely help you adhere to the diet long term. It could get very difficult uh, sticking to the same diet day in and day out uh, with really no end in sight. So by looking forward to that one day where you know you get a cheat meal, it kind of helps you stick to the diet throughout the week. So that's one aspect of it. Second aspect of it is we're not all trying to uh, be, we're not trying to have, we're not all trying to have um, elite physiques here. Some of us just want to be in shape and live a happy life. So what's the point of being in shape if you can't even enjoy a cheat meal or a beer with your friends or whatever? So I completely understand if you want to have a cheat meal for that reason, just understand that you're doing it to live a normal life, completely understandable, but don't do it because you think it's going to help your progress. So that's my opinion on cheat meals. Um, go ahead, have them. It, it definitely helps you live a normal life. Don't do it because you think it's going to help your progress. Like don't just force in a cheat meal during a diet because you think you have to to lose weight. Like that's definitely not gonna be the case. But definitely do it if it's gonna help you mentally, if it's gonna help you stick to your diet, if it's gonna help you live a normal life, and if you're gonna be happy. Um, but again, just try to keep them within reason because you don't wanna, 
and this, as much as you want to live a happy, normal life and be in shape, you don't want to work hard during the week, die all this time, only to blow it by going 5,000 calories over your minutes on the weekends. So you definitely have your cheat meal if you want. Try to keep it within reason. And uh, that's pretty much how I feel. So I'm going to go grab the pizza now, and I'll show you it. All right, so this CPK pizza has actually been becoming one of my favorite things to eat. Um, so for the macros for this whole thing, it's 102 carbs, 48 protein, and 27 fat. Not bad for a whole pizza. I do understand if you only have like 150 carbs for the day, it doesn't make sense to eat the whole thing. You could obviously eat less than the whole thing, or it could be a cheat meal. Like I said, it's nothing too crazy. Every time I eat this, I get way too excited and I burn my, uh, the top of my mouth and it hurts for three days. So I'm gonna try to stall by talking to you guys for another minute or so, and then I'll eat it, but I, I just can't wait. So, um, all right, let me take a bite so you believe that I'm actually eating it. Yeah. I think I actually prefer this over like Blaze Pizza now, so highly recommend this if you can get it. Not bad macros and um, very filling as well. So I'm going to eat this and um, I'll see you at the gym. What is going on everyone? Welcome to my latest leg workout. So figured I would take you guys through this workout and also talk about the need to shock the muscles. I believe I talked about this in a video before, but I still get asked about this all the time. So I don't think I made this video and like, I think it's like old, I don't even know where it is. So we'll talk about it now as I take you through this. Uh, here I'm starting off with hack squats, four sets of 10, and I also do a drop set. As the exercises change, uh, I'll let you know what I did on those particular exercises. I did not film every set of every exercise, uh, but I'll let you know how many sets I actually did do. So when people say shock the muscles, they, I believe they are referring to the need to switch up your exercises extremely often um, under the belief that your muscles get used to the exercises that they're currently performing and they no longer become effective. So let me first say that thought process is wrong. <laughs> so you don't get, what I always tell people is you do not get, a, a, an effective exercise never becomes ineffective just because you've been doing it for a long time. Deadlift squats, those exercises are always going to be effective. You make progress by selecting effective exercises and getting better at them over time by getting stronger, adding reps, adding, adding weight, you, you get better and stronger and make progress by doing that over time, not by hopping from exercise to exercise, um, hoping to quote unquote shock the muscles. Uh, real quick, I moved over to leg press. We did four sets of 12 here also with a drop set. I don't think I showed all of them, only two sets. So anyway, there's only so many different exercises you can do. Let's take um, back, for example, there's like dumbbell rows, barbell rows, pull-ups, pull-downs. T-bar rows, uh, did I say barbell rows, cable rows? So, I mean, there's like, I'd say there's like five or six, like, strong, solid exercises you could do for your back. So, are you telling me that after a certain amount of time, uh, pull-ups are going to be ineffective, and you have to switch from, like, pull-ups to pull-overs, which are clearly less effective, just to shock the muscle? No, you're not going to get better progress doing a less effective exercise just because your body's not used to it. You might get sore, but soreness is not an indicator of growth. So you don't need to hop from exercise to exercise. Find the ones that work for you. Of course, you could cycle between a few because there are some, there are more exercises that are good than potentially the amount of exercises you might do in a particular workout. But don't switch for the sake of switching. Switch because maybe you, you're not feeling exercise, you're bored, you want to change it up but please don't do it for the sake of shocking your muscles. So you'll see that I basically do very similar exercise all the time, except for right here, a perfect timing. So I have been doing Romanian dumbbell deadlifts for a while. I do find those to be uh, probably one of the better, or if not the best uh, overall hamstring exercise. Um, I don't like them though. <laughs> they always feel awkward to me. And although I know they're probably the most effective, I absolutely hate doing them. So I decided to start doing these glute ham raises about two or three weeks ago instead. And I mean, not gonna lie, these are very difficult as well. I can't say I love doing these either, but they are an effective exercise. So I made the switch from Romanian deadlifts to glute ham raises, not to shock the muscle, 
but to give myself a little mental break to, and also because they're still an effective exercise. So you wouldn't see me switch from Romanian deadlifts to leg curls, a clearly inferior exercise just for the sake of shocking the muscle. I do leg curls later, by the way, but not in place of it. Um, just to shock the muscle, but I switched it really for the mental break and because they're just as good. So I moved. The, I did three sets of 10 body weight on those. I also um, superset those with calves. I do four sets of 12 on the calf raises. And that's basically the way I feel about shocking the muscle. Just to sum up, there was no need to shock the muscle in terms of needing it to grow. The only reason to switch an exercise is maybe you're not feeling one, maybe you just want to switch it up because you're bored, something like that. But please don't replace an effective exercise with a less effective exercise. Don't stop squatting because you've been squatting for two months and start doing leg extensions instead. You could add leg extensions like I'm doing for three sets of 15 right here, but you don't have to, don't get rid of squats for leg extensions. Um, so I hope I made that point clear. I, I think I did. Uh, I'm finishing off this workout with leg curls. Again, leg curls are definitely not as good for hamstrings as glute ham raises or Romanian deadlifts, but I didn't replace them. I'm just adding them on top of it as like a finisher. So I superset three sets of 15 on the leg curls with the uh, leg extensions. <laughs> if you guys watch my Instagram stories during these workouts, a lot of people get a kick of when I flip the, the camera around and I show my, I make like a weird face in the middle of these sets. Um, I didn't really think it was that funny, honestly, but a lot of people found it a lot funnier than I thought it was. So yeah. Um, anyway, workouts coming to an end. If you liked the video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.